For me, gimbals have always added a layer of complexity and weight that I just wasn't willing to deal with. But what if I could get max gimbal power in a lightweight package? This is a Zhiyun Crane M2S. Yo, what's going on everybody? My name is Kofuzi and I am a dude who runs a lot. And today I wanted to talk to you guys about my experience with the Zhiyun Crane M2S. Before I give you my thoughts on this gimbal and how it did, I do wanna go over some disclosures. Zhiyun sent me this crane for the purpose of review so I didn't have to pay for it. However, they're not paying me to make this video or to use the gimbal and they're not gonna get a chance to preview any of my footage or my thoughts before you guys get a chance to see this video on YouTube. So with that disclosure out of the way, let's talk about the Zhiyun Crane M2S. And I think for this discussion specifically, it's going to be really helpful if you understand kind of my background and get some context on the way that I shoot video and the kinds of things that I am looking for and might need from a gimbal. So I do a lot of shoe reviews and so I do shoot a lot of b-roll like in the studio like in set shots but I also do a lot of running footage. So for that I typically have a GoPro on an extendable selfie stick uh, or I put a 360 cam at the end of this selfie stick that way I need to be able to capture my feet or other people's feet as they're running as well as other just general running footage and generally I like to keep my rig as light as possible because I might be running something uh, as short as like a mile race or maybe a 5k but as long as a marathon or even longer than that so weight is definitely something that's always a consideration but something that I've been finding that I'm wanting more of is better image quality so I have a Sony a6100 that I usually shoot all my b-roll footage and product footage and this talking head a-roll footage right now that you're watching that's what I'm using to film uh, I'd like to be able to get that kind of level of quality in my action shots so that's where something like the Zhiyun Crane M2S could come into play. Now, let's talk about some specs on this gimbal. It's a lightweight gimbal, it's 549 grams, uh, and getting it kind of like out of the box and ready to shoot with is pretty straightforward. It's been a while since I had really tested any other sorts of gimbals, and I'm happy to say that gimbals have come a long way in terms of ease of use. You don't need any special tools to really be able to get this to go, but you'd need to still do a lot of balancing. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start by tinkering with all of the different levers here. And basically there's just like these sliders that you can use to loosen and tighten each of the axes of movement and get this thing balanced relatively quickly. For this gimbal, it's relatively easy for me to remember how to balance it because basically the rig that I have right now is about as heavy as this gimbal can handle. So I pretty much have to kind of move everything as far as possible in order to get it balanced. And even then it's not perfectly balanced, but it's close enough where the motor can kind of like take care of the rest of it uh, by itself. So here we go. This is about as good as I'm gonna be able to get it. Let's fire it on and we'll talk about a couple more of the specs. So now we've got it into the lock mode and that means that like no matter what you do, it's gonna stay really stable. So this would be good for if you're following something and want to be able to look at the screen here and see what you've got and you wanna make sure that the camera doesn't move around but stays really stable. This is something that you could do. So even if you're running around and bouncing, you're gonna still be able to get a pretty stable or mechanically stabilized shot. Some of the other modes that we can cycle through here is then F for follow. So that way, whenever I move the gimbal from one direction to another, the gimbal is gonna follow me. So if I want it to look up or down, I just kinda of have to point the camera where I want it to go and I can control the movements that way. And then there's another one where it's pan follow. So it'll follow me if I pan left and right, but if I'm kind of like wobbling, let's say I'm going up and down some uneven terrain, no matter what I'm doing, I'm still having a level shot. And only if I'm trying to turn the way the camera looks, 
uh, that's something that it can do. And there's also a joystick that's available to you in all the modes. So you can use the joystick back here uh, to tilt the camera and rotate it around. And there's also an app that comes along with this device. So that way you can connect to the gimbal itself and adjust like kind of like the settings and the speed of all the movements that happen either in the gimbal movements or on the joystick itself. So lots of different ways you can connect to and customize the gimbal. Now the most important thing for me in this is not just the fact that this works really well and it balances and it's pretty easy to use, but the fact that the motor was powerful and it is more powerful than a gimbal that I would normally expect of this size when Gian first reached out to me, I said, my rig is gonna be too heavy to fit on your gimbal. They didn't give me an exact weight of how much like payload is the max that it could uh, handle, but they did give me a list of other A6100 plus lens combos uh, that could be used with the gimbal just fine. My specific lens, the Sigma 16 millimeters, wasn't on that list, but I weighed it out and they said that it would probably work, so they sent it to me. When I measured it out in terms of weight, uh, my A 6100 with battery card and the 16 millimeter lens with lens cap off came in at a weight of one pound and 12.1 ounces or 798 grams uh, and i'd say that pretty much maxes out if not slightly overloads the the pay, max payload of what this uh gimbal can really do and if i switch it back to the follow mode that's when i really kind of had like the most problems with it so in terms of following me around and doing what i want it to do it does everything pretty good, except for when I want it to look downward. So looking up is pretty good and I can still get it to move around and look up fine. And I can get it to move back towards like the horizon level fine. But if I want it to look down, that's when I really start to run into some issues. And then especially as I was trying to shoot some uh, event footage, uh, when I wanted the camera to look down and then pan up or pan up and then down, it would never really go down as far as I wanted to. And then when it did, sometimes it would kind of overload and then just stop or it would just kind of get stuck there and I had a really hard time getting it back up. So extended periods of time when I have it like low, looking low uh, and trying to move around that way were really hard for me to maneuver. The combo that worked out better for me is when I was using the lens that you're actually seeing me on now, which is a Sigma 30 millimeter lens with the A6100. That lens happens to be lighter for whatever reason, 658 grams or one pound and 7.2 ounces. So quite a bit lighter. Um, and that worked out really well with the gimbal. I had no problems moving that around and getting the B-roll footage that I want. The main trip that I took this gimbal on was when I went out to Malaga for the A6 Meta Time Trials event, and I was able to shoot a lot of really great B-roll with the A6100 and that 30 millimeter lens. But what ended up happening to me over the months that I've had this was that I would keep kind of like packing the gimbal with me on all the trips, but I would never end up kind of using it. If I wanted to be in like photographer or videographer mode, this was fine. But like for other events where I'm going there, not only to show the events to the audience, but also to experience them myself and experience them with other people. Um, so that way I could still stay in the moment. I found like, you know, using just the GoPros uh, as inferior as the overall image quality may be, um, that ended up being a better experience for me. So I felt like in terms of being able to live like in it and show it to the audience, I felt like this was a good enough compromise um, because I feel like this is kind of like really um, isolating uh, in terms of like s socially interacting with people. Uh, I mean, cause then it's like, if you're out in an event, um, like there's not always a, like a table for me to set a camera down on. Um, so I'd have to be like just holding it the whole time. And even if I'm powering it off, uh, then like the camera still it's balanced, but it's still kind of like flopping around. And so it just became like, mentally it became very like cumbersome to kind of have this around. And so those are my thoughts on the Xi'an Crane M2S after using it for a couple of months now. Let me know in the comments if you have any other questions or better yet, stop by the live stream that I do Monday through Friday right here on YouTube. I'd love to talk to you guys in the chat. That's all I have for today, everybody. Thanks so much for making it all the way to the end of the video. Hopefully you guys are staying safe out there on your runs and I will see you in the next one. Yo, what's going on?